Alright, so let's tackle this one. Simply supported beam, turn the diagram, draw a free body diagram, determine the external support reactions. So, uh, we have a hinge over here, so we're going to have two forces from that, and we have a roller over here, so I'll have one force from that. So let me redraw our beam here. Alright, now we have point A. At point A, we're going to have two reaction forces. It's a hinge. So we're going to have one in the X direction, one in the Y direction. Um, reaction force A, uh, Y, we'll call that, and reaction force A, X, in the X direction. Um, and at the point D, or joint D, we're going to have only one, so it's a roller. Um, it'll allow it to move side to side, but it's not going to allow it to move up and down. So that'll be reaction force D, Y. Um, we'll have, so we have point B here, we have a force there, I'll call that force B, we know that's 8,000 pounds. Uh, we know that we have a force at an angle here at 45 degrees, All right, 45 degrees, I'll call that force, uh, well it didn't really give it a point, A, B, C, A, B, skip that, C, D. I'm going to call this point E. Um, just to make the notation a little bit easier. So that's point E. So if I can call this FE, we know what we're talking about. Uh, and then we have a force at C. FC is equal to 8,000 pounds. Um, and by the way, FE is 4,000 pounds. So really we need to figure out RFAX, RFAY, and RFDY. First thing we always do with any... any um, thing that's not moving, not rotating, which that tells us that some of all these forces is zero. Everything has to add up to zero. So if I say the sum of the forces in the x direction, all those have to add up to zero, what does that mean? Well, let's check out our forces in the x direction. We have RFAX, and I'm going to assume that's going to the right, I'm going to assume that's a positive direction. If I'm wrong, well, we'll just come out with a negative number, no big deal. Uh, any other forces going in the x direction? Well, this one kind of is. Fe will have a component in the x direction. Um, we could probably, especially since we have an angle, figure out what that is. So I'll write Fex equals zero. Um, now we don't know what any of these are, but this one we can figure out. So let's let's do that. Um, Fex, since this is a, makes a triangle like so with a 45 degree angle, if I want that x component and I'm measuring the angle from the horizontal that's going to be the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, so that'll be cosine. So I can say RFAX plus FE times the cosine of 45 degrees equals zero. Um, I believe the cosine of 45 degrees is going to be 0 0.707, um, or square root of 2 over 2. If you do this enough times, you'll just well, really end up remembering that. So plus 0 0.707 FE, uh, but we know what FE is, sorry, let's plug that in, that was 4,000 pounds, so 4,000 pounds, that's equal to zero, so if I take all of this to the other side and I subtract all of that, um, since I'm subtracting it and I'm subtracting that from zero, it's going to end up being negative, and if I pull out a calculator real quick, 4,000 pounds times 0 0.707, 28.8, or sorry, 2828.4 if you actually use um, cosine of 45 degrees. Alright, so that's a negative 2828.4 pounds. We have one reaction force just from using one equation. Simple enough. But we have two more to figure out. So that was RF. A X. So now we know that's equal to, I'm going to update my free body diagram, that's equal to negative 282, excuse me, 2828.4, or I can change the direction of this on here, and if I change the direction, I don't need the negative anymore. Because again, negative, that's the only thing a negative would show. Um, Alright, so I have RFAX. Now I can sum the forces in the y. Sum the forces in the x equal to zero. This thing's still not moving, so some of the forces in the y have to equal zero as well. Now I can set all these up and consider positive and negative values, or I could just set all my vertical forces equal to all of my downward forces.
sorry, all my upward forces equal to all of my downward forces. Same thing. So, uh, the only force I have going upward is, well, these two, the two reaction forces. So, RF AY plus RF uh, DY, the other point, is going to be equal to all these other ones coming down. So, I have FB plus FC plus the vertical component of FE, since FE is not directly vertical, um, that, that vertical Y component of FE, so I call that FEY. Alright, so I don't know these forces yet, so I'm going to start filling in for the other ones I do know. FB is 8,000 pounds, uh, FC is 8,000 pounds, FEY, just like um, FEX was FE cosine of 45 degrees, the other one is, well, the other, the other trig function, so this would be FE sine of 45 degrees. Again, because I'm looking at this component, well, I just moved off the screen, looking at this component, if this is 45 degrees, this is opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of 45 degrees, which actually in our case, since it's 45 degrees, turns out to be the same as cosine anyway. Alright, so I have 16,000 pounds, and these two added up, plus our uh, 4,000 pound at an angle, 0.7071 something something-ish. If you have your calculator, you can plug that in. Um, but I have basically 16 plus the 16,000, well, yeah, I'll write this out, show all my work, be detailed, um, plus the 2,828.4 pounds-ish, so that's 18,828.4 pounds. Now that's the combination of RF, AY, and RF, DY. That's both of those combined. Now we still, we can't solve for these individually. Luckily, we have one more equilibrium equation. So we can set up now, let's scoot this up, the sum of the moments around any axis are going to equal zero. Not only is this thing not moving left to right, it's not moving up and down, it's also not rotating, hence the static equilibrium. So if I pick an axis here, and I'm going to pick point A, it's usually beneficial to pick, pick an axis that eliminates one of these forces. Because again, this force, when we're, talk, when we're talking about moments, we're talking about force times distance. Um, so if I pick point A, this force is not acting at any distance, it's acting right through it. It's not going to cause a rotation. So I can eliminate that. I'm only considering FB, FE, FC, and um, the reaction force DY. So I think about all of those. And again, you can think about positive and negative, and if you're doing that, counterclockwise is always positive, and RFDY would kind of cause a counterclockwise uh, moment. But I can do this, I can set up the same thing by thinking about what's causing a counterclockwise rotation and what's causing a clockwise rotation and setting those equal to each other. So I have RF dy um, at a distance of 12 feet away from, away from our um, axis here. It's 6 feet here, 3 and 3. You can look at that from the diagram. Um, so I have RF dy at a distance of 12 feet. I have FC at a distance of nine feet. I have F E Y, the Y component of that, not the X, um, at a distance of six feet, and I have F B at a distance of three feet. From all from point A, joint A. Alright, so R F D Y times twelve feet. Let's plug some values into here. Uh, FC is 8,000 pounds times 9 feet. Um, FEY, uh, just like FEX, actually was uh, FE sine of 45, so 4,000 times the sine of 45 degrees, that was 0.707. I'm going to skip a step here, um, and break my own rules, and skip a step and already put in the 2,828.4 pounds. Um, in the same way we found 0 0.707 times 4,000 pounds, I'm just going right to that here. Uh, and that's 6 feet away plus 8,000 pounds times 3 feet. Alright, crank through the calculation. All of this, uh, 8,000 times 9 is 72,000 pounds, pound feet, excuse me, 
plus 6 times 2828.4, 2828.4 times 6 gives us 16,970.4 plus 24,000 pound feet. Again, this is also pound feet. Um, now, all of that is going to be divided by the 12 feet because we want to isolate RFDY by itself. So RFDY is going to equal to all of that divided by 12. Presto changeo. Let me crank through my calculator here. 24,000 plus 16,970.4 plus 72,000 gives me 112,970.4 divided by 12. 94,14.2 pounds because I divided by feet. So I have RFDY is 94,14.2 pounds. All right, two out of three. Got two reaction forces. And now um, I go back to my... Um, equation I had here since I had both of them and if I solve for RFAY, the only one left 18,828.4 pounds minus RFDY which we just found down here so RFAY is equal to 18,828.4 pounds minus 9414.2 pounds which turns out to be half of that, so RFAY is also 9414.2 pounds. And now we found each of the three reaction forces, got our free body diagram, I'll plug in here 9414.2 uh, pounds and 9414.2 pounds. Circle the answers, that's what we're looking for, and we're done.